Hello class, this is Dr. Ogilvy, and I thought I would make a video, uh, hopefully around 10 minutes long, that would uh, give you some insight and bring things together that you've been studying. So to begin with, this is a specimen of pancreas that's extremely well fixed and preserved and stained. And when you look at this Lomac location, and just look at the whole picture, you can see that it's divided into compartments and this pancreas has lobes. So we're jumping ahead here with the uh, pancreas because you will not really get it until the um, fourth and fifth modules. In fourth module you'll see the pancreas as an exocrine, exocrine gland and in the fifth module you'll see it as an intricate gland. So uh, when you look at this you can see the compartments here and of course those are lobules and they're divided in between them is uh, stroma and connective tissue. You can see the pink even at this low magnification which would be collagen. Remember collagen is acidophilic and it binds with the acid dye eosin. And that the large part of the specimen is basophilic as I'm putting my little uh, hand over those compartments. And then you can see the adipose tissue at low magnification. So as we zoom up on this and gradually see a, a higher and higher magnification, you begin to see the organization here. And you learned uh, about epithelium. And you learned about epithelium lining ducts and covering surfaces. Well, over here, these are epithelial cells that are lining ducts in the pancreas. And at this point, these epithelial cells would be cuboidal. That is, they're about as tall as they are wide. And the nuclei are somewhat rounded. So that, uh, and then over here, the same, the same uh, structure as well as over here, another segment of the duct. And the pink material in here would be secretory uh, products coming from the glandular cells. So you learned about epithelial tissue being lining or covering and you also learned about epithelial tissue being glandular. And the glandular portion, as I'm enlarging this, would be these cells. And here you see a cluster of these. This would be an, an acenus, a acenus of serous secreting cells. And they're very nicely uh, uh, displayed and fixed and stained, uh, very uh, typical. You can look at the base of the cell and see that it is more basophilic than in the basal compartment than in the apical compartment, which is eosinophilic. So here you have the rough ER, which is basophilic, and you have the secretory granules that are eosinophilic. You can also see the, uh, and, and remember, if I move over the lecture, tissue preparation for microscopy, this was presented, the difference between acidophilic structures and basophilic structures. And also, be sure that you uh, understand, you know, the, the very common stains. And back over here, you have the list of some basic dyes and uh, acidic dyes as well as the definition of acidophilia, which is uh, a structure that's attracted to acidophilic dyes. So these would be anionic, uh, uh, negatively charged uh, particles. Thus, acidophilic substances are uh, positively charged. The dye is negatively charged. So membrane, membranes, uh, the cell membrane, the smooth ER, and, uh, uh, and also uh, other membranous structures in the cell uh, will uh, react with this dye. And then basophilia, you see, attracted to basic dyes, which are cationic or positively charged. And they, uh, thus basophilic substances are negatively charged to nucleic acids which are present in RNA and DNA. So that's about all I'll say. I'll just remind you that to try to correlate everything uh, between lecture and lab. So back here, we see the nuclei 
and you see a pattern of chromatin in the nucleus. And as you look at the different nuclei, you can see that they have uh, some are more densely basophilic or blue-purple stain, and others are less. And it is, we say that a cell like this, the nucleus here, this is more euchromatic. It has more distended chromatin, or it has distended DNA in it, than the nuclei here. You can see that they uh, have more condensed DNA or condensed chromatin. And then you see other uh, nuclei that are almost totally well, well, these nuclei that I just pointed out would be heterochromatic, more dominant by the uh, condensed DNA. And over here you have uh, a nucleus that is very intensely heterochromatic. And so the, uh, the, the percentage of euchromatin or descended, descended DNA in a cell will be some uh, indication of the activity of protein synthesis because you realize that the descended DNA is, <clears throat> is the one that is carrying out more um, translation. Now if you look in the lower right here you see we're at the highest magnification and you can see that the distance from here to here is 60 microns so you can get a kind of an idea uh, I can I can actually move uh, a red red blood cell say down here and you see what percentage of that 60 microns a red blood cell is. Remember that red blood cells that are seven and a half microns in diameter and um, lymphocytes are about five microns microns in diameter and they are very nice internal markers for measurement. Now I'm going to uh, pause this for a moment and get ready for the next uh, segment of this video. So now as we decrease the magnification, well first of all you see the capillaries here between the acenar uh, 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 cells and the aceni. There's an acenus here, another acenus here, another one here, another one here, another one here. Recall that an acenus is a group of acenar cells, be they serous secreting or protein secreting or mucus secreting cells. And as we decrease the magnification, you're going to see uh, cells that are, and, and by the way, this little group here, all these cells are very lightly stained, and these this is the endocrine portion of the pancreas, and it's actually the place where insulin is produced by insulin secreting cells and glucagon and some other substances like somatostatin, etc. But as we decrease the magnification, you begin to now see more of the stroma. Here is some connected tissue dividing between two lobules. And here's connective tissue surrounding these ducts lined with a simple cuboidal epithelium. So as we go down even further, we pick up some adipose tissue, groups of adipocytes. And as we then return to the lowest magnification, now you see, um, I don't think uh, I was able to show you any muscle, although over here, in the lower right, we can demonstrate smooth muscle in what appears to be a, a, an artery that is a little distorted here and a vein next to it. Often arteries and veins appear side by side. And then over here, this, is, this would be the caliber of a post-capillary venule. You see very thin wall and this is a site where most diapetitis diapodesis occurs, the extravasation or the movement of white cells out to fight infection. And over here are three small fascicles of nerve fibers. You can see the difference in staining and the characteristics of the, of the nerves. So I'm going to pause this again and change specimens to uh, a skin to wrap up this video. So we were able to see senior cells, we were able to see basophilia, cytophilia, adipose tissue, stroma, and parenchyma, the larger part of this pancreas, parenchyma. 
And we also saw smooth muscle in the artery, and we saw a vein, and we saw a post capillary venue, and some nerves. So basically, there's your four basic tissues, epithelium, connective tissue, muscle, and nerve. And they're all working together and organized to form this organ. Now here is a specimen of skin. And at the very low magnification, I can see that this would be the epidermis up here. And all of this is the dermis with some sweat gland uh, ducts and secretory units down here. If we increase the magnification, up here, notice the difference from the epithelium to the uh, more loose connective tissue in the papillary layer of the dermis, and then the very dense, irregular connective tissue in the dermis. And if I zoom in on the epithelium, you can see uh, the melanin pigments. You can see uh, certain cells that are very lightly stained, and these would be melanocytes. And you see the uh, stratum of spinosum, and you see these little spikes here. Those are actually um, the little spiny projections, but at each, at each projection between the two cells is a desmosome. And then, of course, you have the stratum corneum up here. And if we decrease the magnification on this, you saw the melanin pigments. And remember, that's given over to the uh, stratum of spinosum cells by the melanocytes. And if we decrease the magnification and go down deeper, we can see a sweat gland duct here. It actually has two layers of cells, stratum, uh, that is stratified cuboidal epithelium. If we move down here, this is not through the lumen, but there would be two layers of cells in here. And I really don't see any um, lumen here, but this is a small arteriole, and here is a nerve, about three or four nerve fibers in a small fascicle. So I'm going to pause this now to get ready for the next uh, presentation. So we are here in this specimen of skin, we have the epithelium, we have the loose connective tissue, we have the dense connective tissue, irregular, and down here we saw some more epithelium, stratified cuboidal, and some smooth muscle. And there's some more smooth muscle right here. And here are some ducts. And also part of these may be secretory cells of the, in fact, these are uh, most likely the secretory cells of the sweat gland. And, and this is a duct here. And some adipose tissue around. And all the eosinophilic dominance here is the collagen in the dermis. Now this is another specimen of skin where we can see more clearly the uh, subcutaneous tissue, uh, the hypodermis. And I would draw a boundary line about right here because down here are sweat gland ducts and secretory units. Here is an, an artery, or probably an, an arteriole. And then actually, I don't see many hair follicles, but here is a erector a pilot muscle that goes from a hair follicle up to the and attaches into the basal layer of the epidermis. So you see the smooth muscle cells and see the difference between them and the collagen fibers. So now when we zoom in on here to the epidermis, there is some uh, a lymphocytic response here, like maybe a viral infection of some sort. Because most of these are uh, lymphocytes, these little tiny down around nuclei. Remember, those are um, uh, about five microns in diameter. And uh, the epithelium dramatically shows the little spiny projections between the stratum spinosum cells that connects this. So I'm getting toward the end here. This is just going to be short of 15 minutes. So I just wanted to give you an exposure to how all these things fit together. Remember, you've got for this uh, midterm, you also have the lymphoid organs and the basic tissues of cartilage and bone. And maybe this will give you a little bit of encouragement of how to think about all these things and put things together. And when you see uh, a specimen and see the structure, you think about the function and also think about how they're all integrated and put together. So I've got to stop this now, and good luck on the midterm.